All right. Welcome back to Two Stupid Guys Trading Stocks. I'm Vinny. I'm Dylan. And today we're going to talk about a very requested topic. What the hell happened to Facebook this week? That's meta stock absolutely decimated. Largest single day of market cap loss ever. Uh, I've been buying it. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about what I'm going to do with my position and whether or not I think it was a good idea. <laughs> Man, I hope it was a good idea because he said I'm buying some, so I just bought some. Uh, if you guys like this kind of entertaining stock market content where it's two super guys trying to figure everything out, give us a like and subscribe, okay? All right, we'll get to it. Two stupid guys trade stocks. I'm just crying my, my, my massive loss bars here, you know? I uh, I bought more at the end of that. I bought more at 237. I was really nice. happy about that buy because it went yeah. right back up. Yeah, I bought a little at 249. Um, do, do you know like what I'm referencing here? Have you ever heard this story about Zuckerberg since this whole thing happened? Uh, about how he's a robot? Well, I mean, that that was decades ago. We always knew he's a robot. Ah. Um, it, you know, th this meme has kind of come out as well. You know, if you it, no, doesn't really. So apparently, uh, before, like after this happened, before Zuckerberg kind of addressed his team, he, he made it aware to his staff that um, he had scratched his eye and that he'd be wearing sunglasses in, in case he started to tear up that it was his eye scratch. Not that he actually experienced real human emotions at the fact that he lost $29 billion in a single day and saw his company be the largest market cap loss ever in a single day. So to be clear, during the actual like board meeting, like earnings, he's wearing sunglasses? Apparently, he like addressed his team wearing sunglasses and, and told everyone that like he had scratched his eye and that, that would be the reason why he'd be crying if he starts crying. I mean, corneal abrasions do suck. I've they had do. Them before. It's not they a do. good time. Yeah, they definitely do suck. I yeah, I've even remember seeing a guy got one from a towel. I'm like, man, you need fabric softener in your life, okay? Yeah. Uh, maybe that's Mark Zuckerberg's like problem too. <laughs> yep. Um, so this is the results that kind of sent everyone into a tizzy to a degree here. So EPS was actually down 4% year over year. Revenue itself was up 20% year over year, which is pretty, pretty remarkable. Um, you know, you know, the difference in between the two really was about the fact that Facebook is or Meta is spend, spending a lot of money on this push towards Meta. Um, they're also doing a lot of internal investment in terms of upgrading servers. They have like a, a new AI system that they're trying to bring online. Um, and, you know, they, they suffered some serious headwinds due to this Apple iOS privacy change is one of the points I highlighted. If you look at enterprise level earnings, to use EBITDA for market. So Facebook has been buying back shares of the last few years. They bought back, yeah. I think, a four and a half percent or so of shares of the last five years. Um, but when you look at the enterprise earnings, they were basically flat for the quarter. Uh, four point six billion this year, four point six four billion dollars last year. Um, so not not great. Like you know, it, it's still you know there are still ways that a company can really grow forward and deliver value for shareholders through this. Especially they've already started doing share buybacks. As you saw, you know, that was kind of the thought process with Apple at one point in time is that they were still generating so much cash, but their their enterprise level earnings looked like they'd be flattening out. And you know, they were like, well, even if we buy back shares, we can actually manufacture a 15% EPS growth per year just by doing share repurchases, you know? Right. Um, they didn't end up having to do that, but you know, it's possible. I do. So, this is what I was talking about. He, this is the direct quote. He may cry because he scratched his eye. <laughs> May cry because he scratched his eye. Yeah. He lost twenty nine billion personally. Personally, he lost twenty nine billion dollars. He's still worth about ninety billion, but well, that was before the last day, but you know, somewhere in that right. ballpark. Still one of the richest men in the world. Right. Yeah. I do I have a I have a graph up of the share buybacks. It is like a pretty just solid buyback curve. Yeah. It's pretty nice. Um you know, it, it's it's hard for them not to. I mean the the Gross margin on their products is like 84%. It's absolute insanity. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's wild. Um, but it's a you know, software company. Yeah, so. exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, Berkshire Hathaway overtook them in terms of market cap valuation, though, now that with this recent sell-off. So oh, boy. Warren Buffett has vanquished both Mark Zuckerberg and Kathy Wood this year. For you know, now. You know? For now. You know, flossing a little bit. Um so this this was the thing people are really worried about. You know, people love tracking users, and maybe it's just my my naivety and like you know, kind of you know, outsider perspective as far as stock investing goes. Um, you know, same thing that 
shellacked Netflix, right? Was that they they were just not growing users at a rapid pace. This this is Facebook's users. Um, yeah, I want to say this is uh, month monthly active users. I believe is this number. Um, just under three billion, and they've kind of just reached the plateau recently. It's it's insane that to me that like a company like Facebook would be punished for the fact that they they've saturated the market to this degree. I mean, three billion people. You know, the, the, the entire population of Earth is like seven billion people. Yeah, no, they almost have half of Earth. So, yeah. like, I don't. At what point? In, like. Do they just keep on going until 7 billion and then that next quarter they get killed because there's just no more people? Yeah, there's no more people. They, they actually have to then start building rocket ships like Elon Musk and fly to another planet to start getting more you know monthly active users, um, which is <laughs> probably something that's in the works. I'm not really sure. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, it, like how, what portion of the earth actually has internet access you know like you can't, I, can't I don't think that there's much growth left like i don't you know maybe 500 million at the most and okay. i don't have a facebook he doesn't uh, have me yet i do but like do i use it that often no but instagram don't don't forget don't don't sleep on I use instagram, instagram. It, I use it, instagram. I, it, people talk about how like TikTok is, is is taking over this younger user demographic, and that you know TikTok is going to be like the kind of the social media platform, and that Facebook's going to go the way of of um, MySpace. But the people forget that Instagram young people still really like Instagram. Yeah, yeah. They, they may be driving more towards Instagram Reels, which is a, a harder to monetize platform for um, Meta, YouTube. I mean, uh, Facebook, but they're they're still going. Um, I'm this is kind of. Later. I'm like sorry. Reels. I'm going to talk about reels later. I don't like reels. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I spent some time on it yesterday just to kind of think about it. From, you know, now that you're kind of seeing the plateauing of, you know, regular users, the question is, is like, you know, how can you actually still continue growth? And this this chart right here to me is the key to that. This is average average res revenue per user. Um, so although they may get to a point where they they're plateauing right now because of the, the you know, market saturation to a degree, um, they can still extract more value by simply monetizing their base better. They are struggling with that because people are going towards uh, old, kind of newer products that are less reliably monetized, but it's still an avenue which they can and will pursue aggressively. Okay. I mean, the 2021 to 2020 jump is like the most impressive in the last 10 years. So yeah, very impressive. Uh, you know, uh, it's very interesting to think that, you know, Facebook is earning our meta $41 per user. And this is on their global users. This isn't just on, you know, users that are highly profitable market for them. Right, right, right. Yeah. And highly profitable, like advertising market. Yeah. This includes like WhatsApp and, and things like that, that are mm. in the infancy of, monetization right yeah so what what, what exactly did the facebook and meta blame on this they actually talked about this ios privacy thing the app trans uh, tracking transparency that was introduced with ios 14.5 was actually introduced back in april um so truth be told i, I kind of thought this would, had been shown to be a non-issue so it wasn't something that i really had calculated very much in terms of uh a risk to, to Facebook. I mean, it was something that they had certainly talked about, but now it, in the fourth quarter of 2021 is when it really came home to roost, um, despite the fact that it had been out for, you know, months before then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're actually saying that the, this simple thing, you know, the, this uh, tracking transparency act uh, is going to cost about $10 million of revenue next year for, for Meta. What is the app? What does the transparency mean? So this is when you first log on to an app and it asks you on iOS, right? It says, do you, do you want this app to be able to track you or not? Or the fact, and also you can go in after and you can change it so the app is no longer able to track you. So does that ruin advertising revenue for Facebook? Yes, it, it makes it much harder for them to uh, to target the ads properly. I mean, we always kind of joked about the fact that like, you know, my wife and I would be talking about, I don't know, a couch. And then all of a sudden I open my phone and like Instagram is showing me an ad for a couch, right? Right. Yeah. That they know. Like they know a little less now. <laughs> okay. And a part of uh, Meta or Facebook's kind of business revolved around small business targeting ads, right? Like, you know, if, if, if you own a pizza shop in some random town and you're like, oh, like I want to make sure uh, I can target people in my area. Like I, I get ads for restaurants sometimes near me and that sort of stuff. It doesn't make sense for them to be paying for ads for, for you know, 
that target Dylan when he's like, you know, what, 2,500 miles away, that would be a good waste to spend for them, right? Yeah. I so, if it's really good pizza, I'll go anyway. <laughs> so it was always about the return on capital for these small businesses, and they're not able to deliver that to the same degree, and they're also not able to track it to the same degree to actually give good data on it now that the, this, they're not able to track data as well. Now, one thing that I took from this that was actually an interesting silver lining is that, uh, you know, Facebook is, has been held out very much as a uh, monopolistic, anti-competitive company. You know, certainly they've done their uh, part to create that reputation. But, you know, to them having a, a tough quarter basically, you know, kind of throws a little bit of water on that. Uh, now they yeah. can say, like, Google is, like, eating our lunch in one aspect. You know, Google in the complete opposite from them delivered a blowout stock uh, quarter where they're benefiting from all this money that uh, Apple is not able to capitalize. I'm sorry, uh, Meta was not able to capitalize because of their partnership with Apple and the fact that they're the default uh, search engine on, on uh, iOS devices. Um, so it, very, very interesting. You know, they're, they're on the outside of this one for once. <laughs> right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But yeah, hopefully that'll that'll benefit them in some way. And this is the other thing that really took them to to task here was their guidance for the first quarter of 2022. Um, they're predicting revenue of 27, 29 billion. Uh, last year, the same quarter, they did 26.17 billion, meaning they only are implying about three to 11 percent growth. This is pretty stark comparison to the 20 percent they just did, the 40 percent they delivered year over year. Um, right. So it would signal a pretty rapid deceleration in growth. It's a pretty aggressive slowdown. Yeah. You know, they, they, they certainly blamed um, a few things uh, on this and they, uh, they all make sense. I think logically um, they blamed kind of tough comparisons, right? They, they're hitting this, this point where uh, year over year, it's going to be hard for them to, to deliver the same thing. Right. Cause they, they had a great year last year. Right. Right. Um, the other thing that they talked about supply chain disruptions. If, if your company is having trouble obtaining something to sell, like, you know, widgets, as they love to talk about econ economics. Um, it doesn't make sense for you to spend, you spending advertising dollars because you know, there's already demand for your widgets. So right. like, yeah, companies are cutting back. It's just a, a waste bit. of cash. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It, it, they, they need to spend more money on actually getting their products than they do on uh, advertising their products because they have no problem selling through. So that was one of the headwinds that, that they were going to be facing. Another thing too is just aggressive reinvestment. You know, the you got to really believe in Mark Zuckerberg's dream of the metaverse. We did a separate video on that, which I can link. Uh, that that's really where a lot of their their operating cash flow is headed towards at this point. Uh, that server upgrades and also, like I said, that this new like AI engine server that they're they're trying to bring online. That they said. Um, it should be second half of this year, I believe, is the, the timeline for that. that. That's when they kind of anticipate things would begin a little bit better, that they're going to have a rough six months in terms of year-over-year -year comps, and that the second half of this year should be a little bit better. But we'll right. see. I, I honestly think that they should be doubling down on Metaverse because one of the things they talked about was that TikTok was, killing, you know, was a huge competitor and drawing a lot of users. So their answer to that they focused on was Reels, right? And they already did this with Snapchat, where they did stories and it failed, right? First to market is huge. First to market is like one of the most important things. You can't just copy TikTok and then just hope that it's, it's literally the exact same thing. It's not better. It's not really worse. It's just the same thing. Yeah. Uh, but it doesn't have the reputation. It's kind of a waste of time. I know that I, he said that they're working on reels. It's, it's, they already did this with Snapchat. It didn't work. It, it's not that they're trying to make reels better. They're trying to monetize it better. Yeah, I, I want uh, I want double down metaverse. Yeah, uh, I metaverse. mean, oh, that 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 scares me honestly. Like you know, you're talking about big money. I, it was that Reality Engines lost uh, ten point three billion dollars last year. The, the Reality Labs, their their whole uh, uh, metaverse like unit. <laughs> so, I want Ready Player One to be a reality, and they have the key. So. I agree. I agree. Um, they're definitely a major player in, the, in that that realm, you know. And their return on ca invested capital over the last uh, several years has been great. Uh, the, the, you know, so they they kind of delivered as far as that goes. And like, you have to kind of trust someone that's been able to allocate capital that well. Um, the question to me is like, you know, when you when you throw this stuff into a DCF calculator, is what do you give them for an EPS like growth rate? Yeah, that's tough. 
I, I gave them three different ones. And this, this basically is designed to show fair value because I used a 10% uh, discount rate. Right? So if you're looking at 1377 per share, which is what they earned last year, by the way, they're trading at like a, a PE of like 16 right now. It's absolutely yeah. anyway. real. Um, yeah. So, you know, you're looking at 10% per year growth, which is in line with they're predicting for the first quarter. Um, they didn't give for the full year guidance, guidance that I'm aware of the, for the next five years and then 3% perpetual growth rate after that, you're looking at about fair value per share of about $271. So right, and that's the, that, that's your most conservative one. Uh, this is, yeah, I, I did 10, 15 and 20% growth rates. Okay. To see what All the right. fair value would be. Um, so 15%, uh, if they actually can achieve that annually compound for the next few years, you're looking at a, a fair value right now of about three hundred thirty-one dollars. Right? That's better. Um, and then finally, if you actually think they can get twenty percent, which is mind you, this is what they did with their revenue for the last quarter, year over year, was a twenty percent growth rate. Um, the you're looking at a, about a four hundred dollar per share stock value right now. I I don't see Facebook dropping below like a P of fourteen. I just, yeah, I, I mean, I I agree. It, they have such a massive installed user base that I think it'd be difficult for you to justify paying such a low price for a company that has such a massively like profitable core business model. There are certainly a lot of issues in terms of how they're investing their money, and that you really have to trust Zuckerberg, right? Because you have to believe in the metaverse because uh, that that's a major investment for them. Um, they've also, they've ballooned their number of employees over the last uh, year. I, I, I want to say they went from like 40,000 to like 55,000 employees. They added a lot of employees over the last 12 months. Uh, so that, that was part of the reason why their expenses went up so significantly. Um, they're really trying to, I think, invest in terms of in, in themselves in order to grow at this point. They're, they're yeah. not simply going to sit back and just enjoy the legacy businesses and, you know, let the market multiple contract and just kind of monetize those to the best of their ability. They're really trying to aggressively pursue um, kind of new avenues of revenue, uh, revenue generation. Right. I mean, I think I I'm digging the metaverse double down, to be honest, because I think first person to make an actual real place or that works. We have a really good video on this actually. It's essentially yeah. Ready Player One if you've seen it. The yeah. first one to be able to do that is it's going to be pretty huge. Uh, te uh, Elon Musk thinks it's not going to happen for like a hundred years. So interesting. All right, the thinks uh, we'll get to Mars before we have a metaverse. People are people are funny. I uh, I, I was I was watching the uh, the the YouTube stream of the uh, metaverse like conference call from Meta and. Uh, the people that are commenting like Zuckerberg sucks, Musk is the man, and I'm just like, like what? What is the point here? <laughs> I don't know. It has no point. It's just people are just ridiculous. Yeah, I don't uh, know. the same people who are like absolute Elon Musk worshiper, like absolutely hates Zuckerberg, and like I don't mean I don't care. Neither one of them knows who the hell I am. <laughs> yeah, I just want the one who makes me the most money. So I don't, I don't care. Yeah, I, I hear you. So I'm just kind of curious. So right now, I want to say I have uh, I think. 20 shares or something like that of Facebook dollar cost average is like 270 something in that ballpark I'm so. at 3258 nice all right we'll see I don't know I'm, I'm I'm gonna give them a couple quarters to see if this pattern continues or if um, you know this was just a little bit of a slap in the face shortly briefly and they can return to their revenue growth but uh, I mean they are growing revenue if they can return to their profitability levels so that's the question. Agreed. All right. Thanks, see you guys in the next one.